Imagine this, you are running a factory and everything is going smoothly until one machine overheats because of the short circuit and it starts a fire. You might be thinking, could this disaster have been prevented? Well, yes, that's where an overcurrent sensing circuit comes in. It's like having a bodyguard for your electronics, keeping an eye on the current and shutting things down before they get fried. Today we'll break down an overcurrent detection circuit that can sense high currents, trigger alerts and protect your sockets. We'll also see how to design it, calculate its values and see why it's better than other methods. So stick around because this knowledge might just save your next electronics project. If you ever felt stuck between your circuit ideas and an actual working PCB, then let me introduce a partner of today's video, which is RTM. RTM Designer is a complete PCB design tool where we capture schematic, design PCB layout, run simulations, and create manufacturing ready electronic circuit all in one software. It starts with schematic capture where we transform a paper circuit to a proper design, which is ready for simulation and layout. Then we can run SPICE simulations to test our design, to check the performance and catch any mistakes before they cost us time and money. And after that, we can directly optimize component placement on PCB and design layout with advanced routing tools. It even helps with wiring harness design, where we can plan, design, and document our wiring harness, which connect PCBs with each other. And now it gets even better with RTM 365, which connects our design to our teams, manufacturer, and even component suppliers to cloud. With this, our team can review, comment, and collaborate on the projects from anywhere in the world. Very important feature is its bomb portal. It keeps our component sourcing organized, where we can track component availability, compare suppliers, and check if we got the right part before placing an order. So remember, RTM Designer is where we design our electronics and RTM 365 is how we connect with the team to build the project into reality. And the best part is you can try RTM Designer for free. And when you buy the license, you get 25% discount. Just have to click the link pasted below in the description. So now on the video, let's talk about current sensing. Imagine you have a water pipe running from a reservoir and you want to measure how much water is flowing through it. In electronics, measuring the flow of electric current is crucial for monitoring and controlling the circuit, just like measuring the water flow. Current sensing helps us understand how much current is flowing through a particular part of circuit. This is important for applications like battery management systems in electric vehicles, where we need to monitor the current to ensure safety and efficiency. Every electrical circuit is designed to handle a certain amount of current. But let's say there is a short circuit or an overloaded power supply which will lead a high amount of current to flow. So too much current leads to heat, which leads to fire and circuit damage. To avoid that, we can simply use a fuse, but traditional fuses break the circuit when overcurrent happens. And once they are blown, we need to replace them. Instead, an overcurrent protection circuit can sense when the current exceeds a threshold value and sends an alert signal or shut down the system without permanent damage. Let's see a circuit which can detect an overcurrent using an operational amplifier. For this, we'll use an application-specific op-amp which senses the current and can be fed to an ADC. But also, it is specialized in overcurrent detection by measuring the voltage developed across a current shunt resistor and comparing that voltage to a defined threshold limit set by the internal comparator reference. For this application, 
will use TI's INA381A1 current sense amplifier which has an integrated comparator. It monitors the current flowing through a shunt resistor and generates an alert signal when the current exceeds a threshold value. This alert can be used to trigger a protection mechanism such as shutting down a load or sending a warning signal. The load current flows through the shunt resistor R9, creating a small voltage drop across it. The voltage across R9 is proportional to the current flowing through it. The amplifier amplifies the voltage drop across R9 as per its selected gain. As I mentioned, this amplified voltage can be given to an ADC of the microcontroller. Then this comparator compares the amplified voltage against the reference, which is set by this voltage divider resistors R1 and R2. If this input current is within the safe range, then there is no problem. But when the current exceeds the threshold value, the alert pin is triggered, signaling an overcurrent condition. Now, whenever we work on our circuits, there are obviously fluctuations due to voltages, inrush currents, electromagnetic interference, and many more things. And this circuit can sense false overcurrent during any fluctuations in the circuit. We can call it a false trigger. To prevent that, we can implement hysteresis which prevents rapid on-off switching due to small fluctuations in the current. And this small resistor R12 makes sure that the alert does not reset immediately, preventing false alarms. Usually, this alert pin is high signal. When overcurrent is detected, the alert pin goes low, indicating a fault. That's why this R11 is a pull-up resistor which ensures when there is no fault, then this pin is high, not giving any false results. And R10 at the output prevents leakage currents from affecting the alert signal. Let's imagine we need to design a system where the circuit has to detect the current from 1.5 amperes to 40 ampere DC, where we want to detect an overcurrent condition about 35 amperes. The circuit should trigger an alert when current exceeds 35 amperes. This circuit should work at 3.3 volts, and it should quickly detect overcurrent without false triggering. The first and most important part of the current sensing circuit is the shunt resistor. This resistor will measure the current by creating a small voltage drop. We select a low value resistor, so it doesn't waste too much power. But it must be high enough to generate a measurable voltage. So, we can calculate the value of the shunt resistor using this formula. Where V out is maximum output voltage when the current reaches maximum value. That means supply voltage minus 20 millivolts of margin. The gain is fixed by the amplifier, which is 20 volts per volt. We can get this value from IC's datasheet. You can also use a different gain amplifier as well. And the maximum sense current value is 40 amperes. Hence, we easily get the value of the sense resistor, which is around 4 milli ohms. It gives a small voltage drop without excessive power loss. We should always use a high power rated low value resistor to avoid heating issues. The load current flows to the shunt resistor creating a small voltage drop across it. The voltage across R9 is proportional to the current flowing through it. So, if the current is 35 amperes, the voltage drop across shunt resistor will be 140 millivolts. Gain of the amplifier is 20. So, when the current is 35 amperes, then the output voltage from the amplifier will be 2.8 volts. 
and that's where we need to detect overcurrent and report it. This amplified voltage is fed into the comparator section of the amplifier. From our amplifier, 2.8 volts means 35 amperes. We need to provide an alert if this current goes to this level. That means our comparator should also have some reference to give this alert. That's where this comparator reference pin comes into picture. We can provide a reference voltage to this pin and the internal comparator of the amplifier will compare this reference and output voltage of the sense amplifier. If the amplifier voltage is greater than the reference voltage, then only it gives the overcurrent alert. For that, we can simply use a voltage divider circuit. We'll put the reference as 2.8 volts at this pin. So if we calculate the value of R1 and R2 accordingly, where Vs is source voltage of the circuit, which will be around 3.3 volts. Let's choose R1 as 33.2 kilo ohms. So from this formula, we get R2 as 5.9 kilo ohm resistance. When the current reaches 35 amperes, the comparator gets amplifier's output voltage as 2.8 volts, and the reference is also same. So the comparator triggers and provides the alert of over voltage as soon as it reaches this value. Now we need to take care of the hysteresis. It ensures that once the alert is triggered, it does not immediately turn off due to small fluctuations in socket. This prevents false triggering and makes the circuit more stable. It adds a small margin so that once the alert is triggered, it remains on until the current drops significantly below 35 amperes before resetting. R12 feeds back a portion of the alert signal to the comparator input. When an overcurrent condition occurs, the alert pin goes low pulling the comparator pin slightly lower, which increases the threshold voltage required to reset the alert. This means the current must fall lower than the original threshold before the alert turns off. This can be controlled by this resistor R12. If the current falls below 32 amperes, then only the alert should turn off. Hence, we are giving margin of the amperes to settle the output. For that, a resistor between comparator pin and Vout pin would work. Using this formula, where Vout is the output voltage of the amplifier when the load current is 35 amperes. The release threshold is 32 amperes. The shunt resistance is 4 milliohms. Gain is 20. This is an internal offset voltage that accounts for slight variation in the comparator threshold. It is by default 50 millivolts. And finally, the hysteresis current, which is 4 microamperes. We get both of these values from the data sheet. So, from the calculations, we get the value of 47.5 kilo ohm resistance. The alert pin requires a pull up resistor, so we will add R11 as 10 kilo ohms to generate a valid high level signal and keep this R10 as 10 mega ohms to prevent any leakage. Finally, C1 is a decoupling capacitor that stabilizes the power supply. It filters noise and prevents voltage fluctuations. With the right calculation and component selection, we can customize this circuit for different applications, making the project more efficient and reliable. The load current is flowing through the current sense amplifier and increases. Simultaneously, the output voltage of the amplifier is also increasing as per the current. The alert pin is pulled high. The comparator input pin is also following the output voltage. When the current reaches 35 amperes, the alert pin goes low providing the overcurrent alert signal. It stays low until current is present. When the load current decreases, 
it still stays on until it reaches hysteresis level which is around 32 amperes. As soon as the current goes below 32 amperes, the alert pin goes back to its initial level. Well, that's how we can design an overcurrent sensing circuit with a hysteresis feature to prevent false triggering. I hope you learned something new from this. Don't forget to check the description for references. If you found this video useful, hit that subscribe button as well. And for more exciting content, stay tuned.